Hello, welcome to Meditation. I'm your host, Reverend Dr. Pat Dingle. I will be sharing the Word of God with you. First, I will be sharing Psalm 52, and then I will share Psalm 53 with you. It's very, very wonderful that you took the time to join me on meditation. I hope that you are well. Before I go further into the program, I want to send well wishes to Peggy. And I also want to send well wishes to Martha. I know that Peggy and Martha um, have not been feeling well, so I want to say I wish you well. I also have an Aunt Jerry who has been ill for a long period of time, and I want to say hello and Happy New Year to her and wish her well also. To all three of these ladies, I want to send encouragement because God really does care for each of you as he does for all of us. And sometimes when you are laying in your beds and things seem hard, I want you to remember that God knows who you are and he never, ever, forgets about you. I hope that you join with me as I read the scripture today, and I also hope that you will join me in praying for others and also praying for ourselves. Before I start with, with, before I start with Psalm 52, I'd like to sing the chorus of a song. I must tell Jesus. I'm certain that I may switch some of the words around, but I think when we sing that the most important thing is not the words, but the meditation of our hearts and our minds and our spirit as we Come to the Lord and worship, worship him. I must tell Jesus all of my trials. I cannot bear these burdens alone. In my distress, he Kindly will hear me. He ever loves and cares for his own. I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus. I cannot bear these burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus will help me, Jesus alone. Psalm 52. Why boastest thou thyself in mischief, O mighty man? The goodness of God endureth continually. Thy tongue deviseth mischiefs, like a sharp razor working deceitfully. Thou lovest evil more than good, and lying rather than to speak righteousness. Thou lovest all devouring words, O thou deceitful tongue. 
God shall likewise destroy thee forever. He shall take thee away and pluck thee out of thy dwelling place and root thee out of the land of the living. Selah. The righteous also shall see and fear and shall laugh at him. Lo, this is the man that may not guard his strength, but trusted in the abundance of his riches and strengtheneth himself in his wickedness. That's verse set one through seven. And I want to pause here and look at these verses. This passage points to a mighty man, a man who has riches and who does not consider God, but considers his strength and the riches and loves evil instead of good and likes um, to destroy. And let me, let me correct that. He likes evil rather than good and deceitfulness. He'd rather lie than to speak righteousness. So this, of course, would be a problem if you wanted to please the Lord. So this is an example of what we should not want. We should not want to be deceitful or to speak lies rather than righteousness. We should not love evil more than good. So we have an example of, of what God is not wanting us to be. Now I want to move on to the example and to the words and the um, model of how God wants us to be. Starting in verse 8. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. I will praise thee forever because thou hast done it. And I will wait on thy name. For it is good before thy saints. Here in verses 8 through 9, we see that we can compare ourselves to an olive tree. And I had the pleasure of being in Italy doing, I guess, the olive harvesting season. I can't tell you exactly when it is. I never was told. But I was in Italy at a time when they had all of these nets um, just stretched out to catch the olives from the olives trees. And these were the largest nets that I had ever seen. And they were all over the countryside. I didn't see the olives. I was on the bus. But it was a beautiful sight. And so I know that the, the olive harvest produces a lot of fruit. And certainly, as children of God, we should be producing godly fruit in praise and in witness of the Lord. If we are children of God, we must trust in the mercy of God always because it is His mercy that allows us to be in his family. It is his mercy that allows us to be forgiven. And I, I haven't 
gone into a lot of detail tonight. I'm trying to stick to the scripture, but we know that there's more to the story than what I'm saying, but I want to sort of sort of strict stick to the text. Um I will praise thee. I will praise God forever. And basically we know that God is the one that that allows us. He allows us to do everything. Every good and perfect gift comes from the Lord. We know that. So he has done it all. And in verse 9, it says of the good example or the model that we should pattern ourselves after, that we will wait on the name of, of God because it is good to do so. And it is good before thy saints, before God's saints. I want to sing this little light of mine. And as I sing this, I want us to prepare our hearts for a word of prayer. And I'd like for us to prepare, prepare our hearts to think on God, to think on Jesus, his son. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere I go, Lord, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, Lord, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, Lord, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. All in my home, I'm going to let it shine. All in my home, Lord, I'm going to let it shine. All in my home, Lord, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere I go, Lord, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, Lord, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, Lord, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. If you would bow your head and every member of the television audience, if you will bow your heads as well. Dear Father God, we are thanking you, Lord, for another day, for another evening. We thank you for the new year that we have come into. And we pray, first of all, God, that you will forgive us of our many sins. We are praying, Lord God, that you would have mercy on us and that you would continue to lead and guide us to help us do what you would have us to do. We pray, God, for courage to do the things that you would have us to do in a way that you would have us to do them. Oh, Father God, we are praying for the sick and the shut-in. I mentioned some friends earlier, Peggy, Martha. I mentioned my aunt, Jerry. And I extend prayers out to everyone in our television audience. I have a friend named Linda 
who I'm praying for today. God, just bless each and every one of them and comfort and strengthen them and heal their bodies, Lord God, and give them peace in the name of Jesus. We also pray for those who are in other churches who are ill and shut in. And we pray, God, for each and every member, each and every friend, because we know that everyone needs Jesus. All these prayers we ask in Jesus' holy and righteous name. Amen. I am going to move now over to chapter 53 of Psalms. And um, I really do enjoy Psalm because Psalm is a book that really uh, just sings to your heart. And there's a psalm for every occasion in my mind. Uh, I have read them over the years, and they are very, very wonderful. The Bible, which I read from tonight, is a King James Version Bible. So at this point, I will be going to Psalm uh, chapter 53. And I think we'll start off with a song before I go into sharing Psalm 53 with you. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He won't try till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. Thank you, Lord. The fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. Corrupt are they and have done abominable iniquity. There is none that doeth good. God looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand, that did seek God. Every one of them is gone back. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Have the workers of iniquity no knowledge who eat up my people as they eat bread? They have not called upon God. There were they in great fear where no fear was. For God hath scattered the bones of him that encampeth against thee. Thou hast put them to shame because God hath despised them. Oh, that the salvation of Israel were come out of Zion. When God bringeth back the captivity of his people, Jacob shall rejoice and Israel be glad. Now, I just want to talk about the state of a person. And I believe that you have to look at the whole word of God I know that we are under the dispensation of grace. I know that we look primarily to the New Testament. But yet all scripture is profitable unto us. It's profitable, it's profitable for learning and exhortation. So let's look at Psalm 53. The fool. A foolish person 
does not acknowledge God. The Bible says that they are corrupt <coughs> and have done a, a terrible iniquity. It talks about there not being anybody that doeth good. And I want to pause here because I think that what we need to think about is that no matter how wonderful we may feel about ourselves, no matter how righteous we think we are, without the love of God, we are just filthy rags in his sight. And so I think this Psalm 53 helps us to be humble. It helps us to remember our place because truly when you serve God, you must be in a relationship with God. And it's not a relationship where you're equal to God. It's not a relationship where you are under everybody's feet, but it's a relationship that has a hierarchy and God is over us. And then we have the uh, minister or, or the pastor who God calls to lead us. And so there's a hierarchy and there, there's a certain type of relationship that we have. And sometimes in life, because of our accomplishments, because of how much money we earn, we begin to sense or feel that we are better than some other person or some other people. But the Word of God does not um, propose, the, the Word of God is not a proponent of superiority complexes. So I like this scripture because it's very, very humbling. It makes you realize your shortcomings. And if you realize your shortcomings, you have more patience with others and you can be in the proper uh, relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Bible talks about how it says every one of them is gone back. When you become a Christian, it's important to keep a forward motion going. You don't want to become complacent and always be where you were a year ago, or two years ago, or 10 years ago. But you want to be in a continual progression in serving God. He has great things for us to do. And the greatness is only limited by our minds and our hearts, not God's mind, not God's heart. And we know that God is the spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. But we must be in a forward movement not complacent, and certainly not moving back or moving away from God, but moving forward and continually seeking His will for our lives. When a person denies God, they are exhibiting a lack of knowledge. Uh, often, they are also in great fear. And the Bible says that they are fearful where uh, there, there should be no fear. It says there were they in great fear where no fear was. In other words, the ungodly are fearful of anything, perhaps of everything. But when you serve God, he casts out fear. Praise the Lord.
the Lord deals with those who are evil. He deals with the foolish who are unwilling to recognize him. He said, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So it does not matter how somebody feels because the reality is God is who he says he is. In verse 6, we see a historical perspective where the Bible talks about the salvation of Israel. It talks about um, the captivity of his people. And we know these are historical events, the captivity of the Israelites, God's people. But it closes on a high note. And it says, Jacob shall rejoice and Israel shall be glad. And I think that this is our state when we serve God. We will have trials and tribulations in life. But at the conclusion, when all is said and done, we will rejoice. We will be glad. I want to thank you today, first of all, for being here. And I want to pray that the Lord will add a blessing to the reading of his holy word. I'm praying that he will just press it down deep in your hearts such that you will become a light to somebody else. Thank you for coming and joining with me today. I'm always so delighted to have you on, on my show in my audience and I do have a special guest come on but the primary reason that I'm on television is to come and share the Word of God with you. I'm especially um, concerned about those who are sick and shut in, those of you who are not able to come and go as you used to. And I think that it's very important that you know somebody cares. This has been Meditation. I'm your host, Reverend Dr. Pat Dingle. Thank you for joining me, and I hope to see you next time. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. All in my home, I'm going to let it shine. All in my home, I'm going to let it shine.